That's why I got to check in with y'all in the comments. All right. I'm going to have to take that one from the top. <laughs> I'm going to have to take that one from the top. All right. I should have sound now, right? Y'all can hear me clearly now. Put a one in the chat if y'all can hear me. Before I, before I retake the, the, the first opening there. There we go. All right, y'all. There we go. Now I'm coming through clear. All right. Okay, so basically, tonight I'm going to talk about body recomposition versus weight loss, right? I want to talk about the difference between these two things because uh, these can be and often are very different things. Um, when it comes to weight loss weight loss can be a very different thing than body recomposition and it's very important to know that they are not the same thing and they require different states of mind and a different approach so and i gotta keep it honest with y'all and i'm gonna share some of my story and my experience with this you know body recomposition versus weight loss i've done it the right way i've done it the wrong way and i'm actually gonna show y'all me doing it the wrong way versus me doing it the right way all right um now body recomposition when i failed at it it was because i was more in a weight loss state of mind and i made certain sacrifices that i probably shouldn't have made and i wasn't in the right frame of mind and i was pursuing the wrong goal right and then I was successful at body transformation, but in order to really pursue body transformation, I had to take a completely different course and I had to change my diet in a very, very different way, fundamentally different ways. Um, and, you know, I want to talk about how, you know, emotional wellness, mental wellness facts factors into your success uh, with this because it's not just what you do and how often you do it, but it's the thoughts that you have, how you think when you're doing it. All right. 
neither of these things whether it be weight loss or body transformation in general these are not easy things to do and your body doesn't really want to do these things right what's interesting too is getting healthy and losing weight can also be two very different things right just because you lose weight does not necessarily mean that you're healthier I've had people who reverse diabetes, high blood pressure, optimize their cholesterol, significantly improve their liver and kidney function, completely revolutionize their blood test results, and didn't really create a body transformation where they just lost a tremendous amount of weight. They lost some weight, but not like it wasn't a body transformation, right? Because, because we were pursuing health first. And one mistake that people, people really make is they aggressively pursue weight loss when they should be pursuing health first. These are not the same thing. Now, they can have a lot in common. They can go parallel to each other, but they are not intrinsically the same thing. They can actually have diverging paths, right? And I'm going to talk about the, the reason why that might be the case. So. I want to start with my story in particular, my experience. I don't talk a whole lot about me particularly because I'm a bit of a. I don't know of many people who have my story. My, I have a fairly unorthodox story. Um. But for me, now before I went plant-based, I've matter of fact, let me start here. I have gained and lost weight. I've went through weight gain cycles and weight loss cycles before even being plant-based, before being vegan. I was successful at gaining weight. I was successful at losing weight. I did both as a person who was not vegan. I also did it as someone who is vegan, right? very different approaches to both there are some similarities but very different approaches to both um i used to be like 193 pounds i almost hit 200 pounds i'm like i'm five nine all right so for me to be five nine and 193 pounds and 16 percent body fat it might have even been a little bit higher than that. But uh, when I checked it, it said 16%, at least according to my memory. I dropped from 193 pounds to 150 pounds. Um, so basically, and I don't give myself enough credit for this, but in my journey, I lost 40 pounds. Like over, over 40, 40 pounds, really. Right? 43 pounds in my weight loss journey. Um, who wants to see a before and after picture of what my before and after picture looks like? Put a, put a, put a, put a Y in the chat if you want to see, if you want to see the picture. Let's start with an illustration. Put a Y in the chat if you want to see it. I'm going to show y'all. All right. So there it is. All right. So. Can y'all see that? Now, in this, in the before picture, I actually got heavier than this. <clears throat> this wasn't my peak body fat percentage. I actually got a little bit chubbier than this. But you see the difference between the two. Now, this is what body recomposition looks like. All right. This is what body recomposition looks like. So, in the picture on the left, I think, like, I was around 15, maybe 16% body fat. I was somewhere around there. Um, 
and the picture on the right I was I was in between I want to say I was in between six and eight percent I think I was more along the lines of like eight percent at that time I think that's where I was at in between six and eight somewhere around there all right so this is this is body recomposition because the, now with but the difference between these two pictures is I was able to drop just the body fat but retain the muscle mass now I did weight loss but when I did weight loss I kind of just looked soft and kind of chubbier right so I just I got weaker I got softer and it wasn't really that great and I have video so this is basically from like I want to say 2014 so I went plant-based like 10 years ago right um I have another picture here let me show y'all hold on let me dig this up so y'all can see here you see that belly so no ab definition whatsoever in my stomach at this time right so this i think this was i was like at my highest body fat percentage and i was working out hard but my diet wasn't really on point right so i was kind of struggling at this point um i was getting stronger and whatnot you know what i mean i was active but that belly fat right so i've been through the struggle basically is what i'm saying i've been through the struggle with the deep belly button with, with, with the stomach <laughs> struggling to drop the stomach right yeah you can see how old was i uh well i know this was 10 years ago i'm 37 now so yeah this was i guess you could say 27 right so i was working i was doing abs and whatnot not a single shred of abdominal definition at all so i might have actually been like 18 percent body fat here so I've, I've been saying my peak body fat percentage is like 16 it's actually more along the lines of 18. right that's over that's on my instagram from way back um so i've been on both sides i've been through the struggle um now I'm, I'm talking a little bit more about this because you know a lot of people think that oh i've just been in shape my whole entire life i've never had any health issues no nothing and actually i was struggling to drop the body fat i was going through depression my blood pressure was high um you know i i had health problems that i wasn't really necessarily reckoning with chronic headaches all the time anxiety depression etc right on the on the struggle bus mentally emotionally physically um and when i first went now give a little bit of background on how i how i was eating before i went vegan all right before i went vegan um i guess you could say i was a food addict uh, my my eating habits were ridiculous i mean i'm i'm telling you i would eat like dinner could be a whole personal pie from domino's like a 12 piece buffalo wings and a side of cheesy bread and that would be like dinner <laughs> right and then what i would do along with that is i would have like a bowl of chopped kale and it would be this big old bowl i would buy bags of frozen chopped kale right so those would be like my vegetables for the day and i would pour this bit i would fill the bowl up with frozen chopped kale and i would just defrost it and eat it and i was like well you know sure i'm kind of eating garbage pizza and buffalo wings and all of this type of stuff but you know what at least i'm getting my vegetables in <laughs> um i would eat two grapefruits a day um I don't know how many grapes I would eat I would eat like I would eat grapes I don't know maybe it's like a half a pound of grapes like eight ounces of grapes two grapefruits 
and like two bananas a day. So I would eat fruit too. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm gonna eat healthy stuff. I eat a lot of garbage, but I'm eat some healthy stuff. My breakfast would be like six, like a six egg omelet with like two or three slices of cheese. And I would put ketchup on it, right? And I would have that like religiously every morning, just tons of eggs. So, you know, my cholesterol was crazy high, right? Um, I would feel a lot of the times too, in the, during the day, I would feel my heart rate in my head. <laughs> I felt like I had a heart beating in my head, right? So I, w I wasn't exactly the peak of health. I was strong in the gym. I would train a lot. I lived a very active lifestyle, but my diet was ridiculous. And I, did, I, I exercised no portion control whatsoever. None. All right. So the whole personal pizza pie, it wasn't like, oh, well, you eat half now and you save it for later. No, the whole thing. And so when I would get pizza, I would take one slice of pizza and then put it on another slice of pizza. So it would be a slice of pizza sandwich, right? That's how, that's how it would do. So if it was like eight slices or something like that, it would be four pizza sandwiches. <laughs> essentially what it would be. Um... And that's how I would eat. I would eat like that. I think the one saving grace for me a lot of the time was um, I didn't really eat much for lunch. Uh, because I would just be too busy running around. You know, I was a trainer in the gym training people. Right. Um, so I wouldn't I, a lot of times I would skip lunch. I was one of those people who ate like twice a day. Um, if I did eat lunch, it was like the fruit, like I said. But that was about it. Wasn't really much, much for lunch. Sometimes, though, if I ate lunch, I would go to Chipotle. Right? But that was like in between clients or whatever. I would go to Chipotle and I would get this black bean burrito loaded up with avocado and sour cream and, and all of this type of stuff. And I would load it up as much as possible. Right? Like put all the stuff, put all the things. So it'd be like, you know, this $25 extra large burrito that was, that burrito was like 10 pounds. Right. Um, so I'm saying that, I'm saying all of that to say this. I had to abandon when I went plant-based, I pretty much had to abandon like 90% of the food I was eating. Cause like everything was just animal products and like processed foods or whatever right um another thing i would do is i would eat ice cream sandwiches on the way to the gym as like a pre-workout right and this is like one of them habits too that got me to being like damn near 200 pounds <laughs> this is one of them habits that definitely got me there i'm not gonna lie it was like snickers bars ice cream sandwiches on the way to the gym uh or you know it would be that kind of thing just because I was hungry all the time. So I was hungry all the time and eating all the time and living a very active lifestyle, walking back and forth from gym to gym and whatever. Right. So I'm walking all over the place, probably walking 15, 20 miles a day or something like this and then hitting the gym every day, religiously training, power lifting and all this, trying to lift as much weight as possible and just eating, eating myself to death. If I would have stayed on that route, I'd probably be one of these people who would like had a heart attack by like 45 years old. And, you know, oh, he was fit. He always worked out, whatever. He's one of these guys, power lifter and died of a heart attack. But when I went plant based, I, I pretty much abandoned like almost everything I was eating, like 90 something percent of everything I was eating. Um, and I went vegan for ethical reasons because I saw and I barely saw, but I heard. I heard the sound of animals being slaughtered in a slaughterhouse. It was the sound. It was the most horrible thing I ever heard in my, li in my life. I couldn't watch it. Right? And it was my girlfriend at the time, and she showed it to me. And I was like, oh, I don't want to see that. And I turned away, and I wouldn't look at it, but she turned the sound up. Right? Cause she's, she's an asshole, right? Um, I am too, but I'm, I'm just saying, right? So she turned the sound up. She wanted me to hear it. And I just went, 
I cut right at that point. I was like, I can't eat no more animal products. I'm done. Because at that point, I was completely disgusted with any animal products whatsoever. I'm like, I can't participate in this kind of animal abuse. That is demonic. I don't know what that is. That sound, that's horrible. They sound like a million babies in there being slaughtered. This is the worst sound I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, I never heard the sound of a Holocaust before until then. It was nauseating. So I went, I just went vegan immediately after that. It destroyed my world, right? I love food. I love food. I love eating. And I mean like eating in an unrestrained way. <laughs> I love to eat in an unrestrained way. I don't like portion control. I don't like being strict about what I eat. I don't like doing that. I don't like it right um so you know people may perceive me as a person like oh he's really strict with what he eats and he's really and i am but it's not because i like like i like it right it's the context i'm doing it because i because i have a backstory and a reason why i know the ins and outs of why i love food right i love myself more right and if I'm going to be vehemently against animal abuse and that sound, then yeah, I, you know what? You got certain things you, no matter how much you love it, you got to give it up, right? Because if you'll eat past your red lines, if you'll eat past your ethics, your moral compass, you, you don't stand for anything. You don't have strength of character. At least that's the message in my head, right? That's my narrative. So I go plant-based, I go through sports nutrition, plant-based nutrition, right? Education, two years straight, right? From like 2014 to like 2016, because my conundrum was, well, I just gave up like almost every damn thing I eat. I, I, I am I am a sports performance coach, a, a strength and conditioning coach and all of this type of stuff. But I can't tell people to eat animal products because I can't tell people to do something that I don't do and I'm not willing to do. I can't tell you to eat something and it's like, I'm, I wouldn't eat that. Right? So now I not only do I have to learn how to do things the right way, for me but i also have to be able to educate others on how to do it as well because this is my career and i have to live within my truth right i can't write omnivorous diet plans and i'm plant-based can't do it and if i tell you or if i say anything publicly it's things i've learned a long time ago and i've tried it first and i've tested it and I've got data for it, and it's well researched first before I say it. Right? So, whatever you've heard me say on any of these live streams, this is not like new groundbreaking information that I've never tested and don't have data for. Right? So, uh, because I'm horrified of being wrong, <laughs> I'm horrified of saying the wrong thing, right? I got to see receipts. So in the beginning, you know, I pursued, I don't know if I really so much pursued weight loss, but what happened essentially was if you cut out 90% of your food, you end up barely eating because, well, what, uh, what do you eat? Uh, well, beans are vegan. I can eat rice. That doesn't come from an ass of an animal, right? So I can eat that, right? I can eat beans. That's got protein in it, right? And grapefruit, I mean, that grows from a tree, right? So that's fine. Right? So this is what I'm thinking. So these are kind of just the things. So I had, and it's kind of shameful because I realize most human foods are plant-based and I barely eat like that. I've been eating like an asshole my, my, for years in a gross pathological way, right? This is what I was telling myself, right? You eat like an asshole. 
and you got and that's over with i'm very i can be very harsh with my language to myself like certain things that i would call myself or tell myself i would never say that to other people like i wouldn't say to another person who's struggling with health issues you eat like an asshole i wouldn't say that but i would say it to me but i say it to me as a mechanism to reinforce my commitment to a particular path that's why i, I do that right i don't know if it's healthy i just know it works <laughs> right don't tell yourself you eat like an ant. don't do that right that's just a, i do that um you should say nice things to yourself um but in any case i lost weight i dropped down to like 175 pounds or something like that right so the picture where you see the, the where you see me doing the kettlebell swings and whatnot that was me i dropped down to like 175 pounds okay so that wasn't me at my top weight of like 193 pounds that was me at like 100 177 pounds 175 pounds somewhere around there but no ab definition so i'm like ah this plant-based thing but that was in the very beginning in my learning phase nobody even knew i was plant-based at the time when i was doing this nobody even knew i didn't talk about it so like I didn't start talking about plant-based stuff and plant-based nutrition and whatnot until like two years after I was plant-based. Nobody knew. So everything was about barbells and kettlebell swings and exercises and whatnot. It was no none of the plant-based stuff. I didn't say a word about that. But what I started doing is I started writing diet plans and testing out my methodology of a, of a high raw, well not high raw, but it was more so just whole food, high carb, plant-based diet. And I was doing the really high carb approach. Um, and I was doing the, the high carb approach where like, you know, only like 15% of your macros comes from like fat and then like the rest is carbs and protein, right? And intermittent fasting, right? You start eating at 12 o'clock, you finish eating at eight. And this was like the basic structure that I was using at the time. And I would write diet plans along that formulation for people who I was working with personally in the gym. So the Tribe by Noir platform, what y'all know today is Tribe by Noir. The first two years of Tribe by Noir was private. It was closed. It wasn't online. You couldn't stay. There wasn't nothing to sign up for online. Right? So it was only for people who I was working with personally in the gym. And doing this with people and they were seeing phenomenal results and i'm like you know what this is solid not only was it working for them but it was also working for me right so 2016 that's when i'm like you know what let's do it now we go now we go public right because the folks need to know about these strategies uh, and that was the inception of my journey now, I've learned a lot more since then. My whole entire, the whole 10 years has just been like a nonstop learning journey for me. And the more you learn, the more you realize that this is stuff that you won't be able to learn necessarily in one single curriculum or even if you get like a, you can go to school for nutrition and dietetics and not learn this stuff. And most people don't. Uh, and you learn that. So now all these years later, it's like, oh, actually, you don't really need to eat cooked food at all. So I went from, so from, from me today, barely eating cooked food to, and, and back 10 years ago, it was just all like, just whatever, just eating like an opportunistic wild animal, right? Just whatever you can get, right? I had like a raccoon diet. Pizza, buffalo wings, ice cream sandwiches, Snickers, but whatever, everything's on the table. If it tastes good, you just eat it, right? You just need something to put in your stomach that's just going to get you to put one foot in front of the other, right? Get it how you get it. Some post-apocalyptic eating, right? Night and day. From 16, or let's say even 18%, I don't know if maybe 17%, maybe 18%, I don't know, but down to 6% as my journey of dropping over 40 pounds. You have to be very clear on your goal. Now I'm gonna pivot from me, right? And I need to learn more about how to talk about myself. I don't do it that much. 
and maybe that's a problem. If y'all want me to tell more stories about myself and my experiences, I'll definitely share if y'all want to hear that. <laughs> um, but one of the most important things that I've learned is you have to be very deliberate about the goals that you set and you have to be informed about what the journey is going to look like. Because if you're not clear on your goals and you're not clear on what your journey is going to look like, you'd be in trouble. Right? So here's an example. <clears throat> Let's say you've got all kind of health problems. You eat breakfast, you skip lunch all day, and then you eat dinner, whatever. You got busted eating habits, right? Um, you do a pastry in the morning with coffee or something like that, for example, a croissant, which is basically just fat, just bread made out of fat. <clears throat> so it's just fat, sugar, and like caffeine, right? A lot of Americans do this right before work. Which, by the way, is the worst combination for your health. And then for dinner, <clears throat> you just, you know, you eat for dinner and maybe you get Chick-fil-A on the way home. Or you're like, ah, I'm trying to be better about my health. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eat baked chicken, broccoli, and rice when I get home. Right. Um, or lasagna, but it's home cooked. I don't know. You know, it's a lot of different things that you could do for dinner. That's not very like deliberate or intent. It's opportunistic eating. And opportunistic eating is dangerous. And vague meal choice is dangerous. All right. What you need to do is you need to assess. Okay, do I have fatty liver disease? Am I diabetic? Do I have high blood pressure? Do I have uh, CKD? Do I have chronic kidney disease? What are my issues? And let's fix those issues in particular. All right. So, for example, if you book a call with me, we get on a call. We're going to go through your chronic illnesses. And we're going to prioritize those first. We're not really going to talk about ca calories much. We really don't ever talk about calories, to be quite honest. I don't really prioritize calories very much. Because the interesting thing to know about calories... And people can go through a full college curriculum and not really know this, but there is no such thing as a caloric surplus or a caloric deficit. That's not actually a real thing. Because you cannot eat for a full 24 hours. Your body will still burn calories. However many calories your body burns is just how much you burn, but you can't eat calories. That's the thing. You can't eat calories. Right? And the reason why we have to talk about the calories in calories out thing is because your body can be prone to storing fat even if you barely eat so you can consume food that can technically be called calories but just because you consume that food doesn't necessarily mean your body's going to burn it regardless of whether you're in a food surplus or not You don't have like a fuel tank and all of the fuel that your body uses comes from this one original place. It's not how it works. Your body uses fuel from all places in your body, right? Visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, your liver, muscle glycogen. Your body can break down muscle fibers and use that for energy. There's all of these different options for your body to get energy from. And that's where the whole calories in, calories out thing, it doesn't really work. Especially if you're diabetic. Because you can consume foods and your body doesn't really metabolize and utilize that food for energy in any kind of efficient way. So food is going in, but it's not getting used. Right? So you can gain fat and be losing muscle as a result. So your body's breaking down muscle and storing fat. Right? And this is how people get skinny fat. Right? So you got to prioritize, okay, you have a metabolic issue. You have to fix the metabolic issue. Now, if you have all of these issues, diabetic, high blood pressure, fatty liver disease, whatever the case is, and you're just like, I got to lose weight. And a lot of doctors say this. Oh, you have, you have all these different health problems. You just got to lose weight. That's not helpful. 
right? And matter of fact, put a put a one in the chat if you've went to your doctor and your doctor told you, oh, you have to lose weight. Like just kind of just this vague statement of just like you, oh, your blood pressure's high, oh, your cholesterol's high, oh, well, you, you know, oh, you, you're insulin resistant. You, you, just, you got to lose weight. And I know that this statement is agitating, and this is this is not a helpful statement to make because you know you need to lose weight. You don't have it. No one needs to tell you that you need to lose weight. Everybody knows this. You know, people know when they're overweight. <laughs> so, so if you have all of these issues and just see all the ones popping up, and so that's not a helpful statement. No one's gonna book a call with me and they're gonna tell me all their health issues and I'm gonna be like, oh, well, you, you need to lose weight. You should, you should eat a little less, right? Cause you'll get off the call and be like, this guy's an asshole, You're wasting my time. That's, <laughs> I already know that. Right? Well, you just need to eat a few hundred less calories a day. It's not helpful. A few hundred less calories of what? Right? Oh, well, you just got to eat less processed food. What's a processed food? Oh, like bread and burgers and stuff. Okay, bread and burgers. I just got to remove bread and burgers. Well, not just bread and burgers, but like, you know, maybe like you got to remove like uh, uh, chips and cookies. Well, I don't really eat chips and cookies. Well, like, I don't know, crackers? I don't really eat crackers. This is a stupid conversation to have. It's ridiculous, right? This is stuff we've already heard. There's no shortage of people who are like, processed food is bad. It's like, yeah, we get it, right? So we got to get a little bit more granular. Okay, you've got, blood, you got high blood pressure. Why? You're insulin resistant. Why? Well, what are the top causes for this? Oh, I know. Magnesium deficiency. Here we go. Vitamin D deficiency. There we go. Magnesium deficiency and vitamin D deficiency are intrinsically linked. All right. Chances are, if you're magnesium deficient, I'm willing to bet that you're also vitamin D deficient. If you're vitamin D deficient, I'm willing to bet you're magnesium deficient. So let's say your doctor runs a test and says, oh, you're vitamin D deficient. And then he gives you a vitamin D pill. Here's here. Take this vitamin D. And then you take the vitamin D and then you don't really experience any changes. So why is that? I'm taking the vitamin D and I don't it doesn't really seem to be doing anything for my vitamin D levels. Should I take more vitamin D? I don't know. Well, how much magnesium are you getting in your diet? Well, I don't know. Well, how much, how much magnesium did they tell you to get in your diet? Well, they didn't talk about magnesium. It's kind of important because in order for your body to metabolize the vitamin D, you need magnesium. Magnesium is the currency that is needed for vitamin D synthesis. Right? Put a W in the chat if y'all ever heard that before. If this, it matter of fact, put a W in the chat if this is the first time you're hearing that. <clears throat> These are things that are important to know. <clears throat> If you have, and the thing is, if you have a metabolic issue, you can't medicate your way out of it. You can't. It's not possible to medicate your way out of a, out of a me metabolic disorder. It's not possible. Metabolic disorders are primarily and even exclusively diet related. You have to eat your way out. And you can't even fast your way out of a vitamin, out of a, a out of a, a magnesium deficiency. You can't even do that. Right? You have to eat magnesium rich foods. <clears throat> so if you're vitamin D deficient, you go to your doctor and your doctor says, oh yeah, you need more vitamin D. Did they ever, did they ever tell you, hey, you know, you should eat more of these foods that are rich in magnesium? Did they give you a list? Right? So what would be in that list? Uh, pumpkin seed kernels, chia seeds, hemp seeds, oats, buckwheat, lentils. 
right? Chia seeds, peanuts, almonds, cashews, amaranth, right? <clears throat> hey, um, and if you have leaky gut or gut health issues, it'd probably be a good idea to supplement with some form of <clears throat> liquid or powdered form of a supplementation. So magnesium biglycinate, right? Chelated form of magnesium optimized for absorption. 210 milligrams in the morning, 210 milligrams at night. It's just an example, right? Or you can do 210 at night and get the rest of your magnesium uh, from your diet. So, so dietary strategy. So I'm, this has nothing to do with weight loss. I'm, I'm getting there, but I'm telling you what comes first because weight loss, believe it or not, does not come first. If you're obese and struggling to lose weight, there's other things that you have to take care of before you even get to weight loss. Right? And then to even get to body recomposition, if you're if you're like, you know, a, over 100 pounds overweight or something like that, before we even talk about body recomposition, we have to go through the weight loss uh, phase first. But before we even go through the weight loss phase first, you have to correct your metabolism by actually being more well fed. You're underfed. Your body's starving for certain nutrients. Right. So a lot of people who are significantly overweight, they actually have to start eating more and actually develop a healthy relationship with food before you start cutting calories and doing all of this. Right. So there's other things that come first. So that's why I'm starting back. This is one of the things that I had to learn, too, because one of the biggest benefits that I noticed when I actually started getting right things right in my own diet was my mental health was improving when I ate better. This was before any of the body recomposition stuff happening. I started feeling better in my mind first because I went through a lot of mental and emotional health struggles like big time. That was one of the primary drivers of all the belly fat. This is weird concentration of belly fat. I was like, damn, I can't see my abs. What's going on? I got all this belly fat. And my belly button got deeper as I got deeper into depression. <clears throat> and if you're dealing with chronic anxiety and depression, that's also a vitamin D and magnesium issue. Excessively high cholesterol, high blood pressure, vitamin D, magnesium issue. Right? So I started doing this habit, and this habit really worked for me. I would do my workouts outside. So like that video that y'all saw with the kettlebell swings with me doing that, right? With the real smooth belly, the smooth round belly, right? I was learning, you know what? And I got real dark. I got real tan. I was doing my workouts outside whenever I could. I would work out in, in, when the sun was at its peak, almost. I wouldn't advise people to do that, but me, I'm a bit of an extremist. <laughs> so I was like, I want to soak up all the sun, right? So I got like a, a, a squat rack with a barbell that I could bring outside in the yard. I brought my kettlebells out in the yard. I would work out out in the yard, baking in the sun. And that was when I started recognizing a real turnaround in my health, my mental focus, my wellness, and is, is, is my body transformation as well. Um, so basically what you'd want to do is before you start counting calories and all of this type of stuff, what you want to do is make better food choices. That's where you start. You make better food choices. You make better food choices and you eat better food choices in abundance. This is where things start to significantly improve. <clears throat> so let's say you had lack of magnesium, really acidic diet, 
low vitamin D, you're anemic, you had all these issues. Here's what you do. Before you start focusing on weight loss, because weight loss can mess around and make these issues worse. <clears throat> Having low vitamin D and magnesium and low iron and stuff could actually prevent you from losing weight. So you have some staples in your diet. For example, grapefruit was a staple in my diet. And grapefruit is a big deal because the beta carotene, the high vitamin C, uh, grapefruit is a significant source of potassium. It's a really good food. Grapefruit is like one of my top all-time fruits. It's a big deal. Grapes, that's another staple. Grapes are very rich in vitamin K and copper and manganese. All right, it's a big deal. Rich in antioxidants. It's a stress reducer. And grapes are very good for uh, preventing you from catching infections. Um, it's, it, it's protective of your gut lining, your stomach lining. Um, it, you know, it helps to reverse the dopamine resistance, low serotonin, anxiety, depression, uh, poor sleep quality, all this kind of stuff, right? So grapefruit, grapes. That's a great combination as well. Kiwis. Kiwis are extremely rich in vitamin C also a good source of vitamin E as well. Kiwis are a big deal. That's all, that was also one of my top picks. So those were, those were like my top three. Bananas. Bananas are actually a high magnesium fruit. Bananas are very rich in magnesium. A lot of people talk about ma uh, potassium from bananas. Bananas have potassium, but the more notable part of, magnes of of bananas is, number one, the folate and magnesium. Bananas are very rich in folate and magnesium. Uh, B vitamins, period. But this is very important for your nervous system. This is very important. The fiber in bananas also helps to improve your digestive tract, your gut lining, your gut health in general. Bananas are a very big deal for me. Oh, man, a rich source of magnesium and manganese right hemp seeds very rich source of protein very rich source of omega-3 essential fatty acids very rich source of iron zinc magnesium copper manganese all that right almonds rich source of magnesium calcium iron copper a good source of selenium vitamin e amazing food Right. I used to absolutely crush Granny Smith apples. I was a big fan of green apples. Right. I like I, I like the sourness of it, the tanginess of the of the green apples. Now I'm a big apple fan. Period. I'm a big fan of Pink Lady, Gala apples, and Honeycrisp apples. But apples are a good source of boron. It's a very good source of, of fiber because of that apple pectin, which is really good uh, for improving gut health and creating short chain fatty acids, which helps to convert uh, white fat into brown fat. So it makes it easier to burn stubborn fat. Everything I just mentioned so far is just fruits and nuts, no cooking required. Oats. Okay. Um, oats are actually very good for weight loss in general. Oats also are a rich source of um, soluble fiber, which acts as a coating for your gut. So if you have like a like you have a sensitive gut, <clears throat> or you have like you experience pains and stuff like that in your gut, sharp pains or whatever the case is, rolled oats in particular. Now, what you could do is you can get uh, a sprouting jar a sprouting jar is basically like a mason jar with uh, the top being a um, a mesh top so it so it has like these little holes in it so basically you can put the oats in the, the, the sprouting jar you put the lid on you fill it up with water and then you can drain the oats and so you can basically use this to rinse the oats repeatedly um, and then you soak the oats for like an hour or two or so like that and let them absorb the water and soak up. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me get both of these actually. So these are uh, my mason jars. I got buckwheat in this one, right? So this is, this is the, the buckwheat is in this one and then um, I got my oats in this one. 
right? So I'm going to rinse them. So you see the water's a little bit cloudy because I'm letting it soak. And then I'm going to rinse them again. And then this is the tray where I let them drain out in the tray to dry off, right? And they, you know, they soak up the water, they inflate, they get soft. And so I don't have to cook them. I don't have to cook the oats. I don't have to cook the buckwheat. Right? So this is, so this is all raw. I don't have to cook the buckwheat. I don't have to cook the oats. Right? Um... I'll spill the water. Uh, so yeah, basically, oats are actually a very rich source of iron, magnesium, zinc, and all of that as well. Oats are actually a really good food for body recomposition. So is buckwheat. Right. Real quick, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up. But you see the top of the jar? It's a it's a mesh. Right? So the water can can be poured in and out through the top. So you know you can do the oats and then basically you can have overnight oats. And if you're if you are insulin resistant or diabetic, soaking them and then leaving them in the fridge, um, it it, cre it 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 makes it lower on the glycemic index so it won't spike your blood sugar as much right um so that that's one of the benefits of that so basically it goes from being dry you rinse it you soak it you drain it let it drain out in the in the sprouting jar and there's like a tray where like the water drips out into and you leave that in the fridge um and when it's cold Basically, it becomes what is it's called starch is starch resistant uh, carbs. Um, I, I, is that the, I feel like that's not the term. Maybe I don't know. It was just basically it's um, it goes through a process where basically it becomes uh, lower on the glycemic index, so it has much less of an impact uh, on your blood sugar. And you know those oats, you can blend them in a blend them into a pudding, and you can put a little bit of uh, coconut milk, uh, not coconut milk, but any kind of plant-based milk in general. A half a cup, a whole cup, or whatever the case is, depending on what else you put in there. You can do the oats, and then you add hemp seeds, and you can puree it. You put cinnamon, maybe a pinch of nutmeg, some sea salt, that kind of thing, and then pour it out into your bowl, and then top it with blueberries or strawberries or sliced banana, whatever the case you want. To do. Real easy stuff, requires a no cooking. So you don't gotta worry about burning anything, leaving anything on the stove for too long, right? Um, and that could be a, a, a high protein, high carb, high magnesium, iron and zinc and copper rich meal right there. High in vitamin C and all that. This is how you wanna start thinking, right? Before you even start considering the whole weight loss thing. Now you will, these foods are all conducive to weight loss. But one thing you have to change your mind, the reason why I'm focusing on food choice a lot is because you have to focus on healing your body. If you're going to lose weight, you do it through healing. That's what I'm basically getting at here. So all the fruits, healing foods. So I'm focusing on micronutrients and all that, the minerals and the vitamins and all this type of stuff. Right. And what it does for your mental health and everything, because this is prep for the next phase, which is the weight loss phase. Weight loss is not the first phase. You would lose you would lose weight making better food choices, but it's it's a side effect of making better food choices. Weight loss is a side effect of getting healthier. It's a side effect. Right. So you're not doing things or eating certain things to lose the weight. You're, you're eating certain things to heal. So when you're new to this journey, you have to think healing, not weight loss. I understand you're like, I really got to get this weight off. I, re I really got to get this weight off ASAP. I, I feel that because I've been there as a person who dropped over 40 pounds. I understand. But you got to think healing and then you got to think self-respect, right?
the focus on weight loss it's very easy for it to become abusive right we see the weight loss shows and it's about like really obese people and they got some trainer with with an eight pack abs and all this and they go and they look in their kitchen and they're like all your food is garbage throw everything out this is disgusting and we're gonna be in the gym bright and early in the morning and i'm gonna have you jumping over boxes getting on the ground laying on your stomach getting up jumping in the air doing kicks running on treadmills jumping rope right jumping through circus hoops and all types of stuff right and they had people doing stuff and you see them struggling miserable right and the person's like i feel like i've got a heart attack you quitting on me it's like no this person just said like you know they feel like they're gonna have a heart attack it's not quitting they, they don't want to die <laughs> It's, it's kind of abusive right we understand you know you want to work hard and hard work and all that you know american work ethic blah 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 yeah, that's great but the thing is is that you can't just work the crap out of sick people and obesity is an illness you're not like obese because you're lazy that's not what this is right and this is the thing i probably should talk about more obesity is not a thing like oh you just you're you're big because you're lazy that's not what this is you don't you don't this is not a thing you're lazy it's not really what that is when you're in a body and it's hard to move in your body you're less likely to want to move because it's extremely hard to do that right like we got to be honest about that it's hard to move being out of breath is extremely uncomfortable being heavy and your body is way oversized and whatnot and your mobility is limited it's hard to do <clears throat> right um and is these are like some of those things where you know we got to have a bit more of a nuanced conversation about these things where we're not developing an abusive relationship with fitness and going to the gym we're like oh we're gonna crush and annihilate our workouts and crush and annihilate ourselves if you're sick and you're struggling you don't want to think about crushing and annihilating all right that's for healthy people we have to get to a standard of health first and diet is the entry point. When I created my body transformation, I wasn't crushing and annihilating myself with workouts. I was not doing that. And I don't even, I don't create training plans like that either. If anybody's ever seen any of my training plans, they're not like that. It's not like, oh, we're gonna, you jump on a bike and you and you spin as hard as you can on the bike. Then you get up, you do 80, 83,000 burpees and then you get on a jump rope and you jump rope as fast as you can for five minutes and then you put on boxing gloves and you throw a thousand punches at the wall and then you take off the boxing gloves and you run around your house uh 12 times in under three minutes that's not what the workout is because when you do that it's so hard that when you do it and you reach your weight loss goal you never want to do that again if you're going to do that and you're going to work that hard, you do it once in your life and you never want to do it again. So when people reach their weight loss goal, what do they do? They stop doing that. Oh, I'm done. That's out. It's like, it's like going to college and getting your master's degree. I'm not going back to college. I, I know people, my peers, master's degrees, PhDs and whatnot. And when they're done, they're like, I'm never reading another book again. I'm not writing anything. I'm not reading no more books. I'm not writing no more nothing. I'm done. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of all the reading and the research. I'm done. I'm tired of it. <laughs> right? Because you, if you do enough of something, that's like, you know, I like Belgian waffles. But if I spend a month eating Belgian waffles every meal, every day, I will hate Belgian waffles hate it you get sick of anything you do it too much in exercise it's the same thing and if you got to crush yourself and then it gets to the point where you know your knees are kind of hurting your elbows are kind of hurting you're tired because you've been working so hard and your nervous system is fried and so like it's getting harder to wake up in the morning and so now you got to dig in and find even more motivation to go back and do it again and it, it breaks most people it does it breaks most people that whole body transformation weight loss journey it breaks most people 
talking about like over 90% of people get broken by this. They don't make it. And the common denominator is, is they started with that. You don't start there. You have to treat obesity as a sickness. It's you're not well. And so you need to nourish yourself. You got to love on yourself. You got to take care of yourself. Right? This is why like in all of my videos and stuff, you hear the water in the background. I want to create peace. Right? Calming music, water running. It's got to be a vibe. Right? I'm not going to be one of these people who come with all of this aggressive energy. You got to fight, crush, kill, dominate, annihilate. Crazy guitars in the background, all this bass and all of this, great stuff flashing, just chaos. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most people, people with high blood pressure don't want to see all of that. Just raise your pressure even more. It's too much. You got to chill. You got to chill, relax, focus. You got to go inward, right? What are we doing here? I don't feel well. I need to go to bed earlier. I need to eat for better sleep. I need to nourish my body. I need to fill my body back up. So one thing is very important to know is that food is an investment, right? So I talk about, um, you have investments and you have liabilities. You have investors and you have consumers. Consumers are just people who are just opportunistic eaters. Consumers become obese. Consumers develop metabolic disorders. Investors, they eat and the food they eat that improves their quality of life, that improves their function, that improves their form. So when you invest, you're eating or doing things with the idea that this thing that I engage in now is gonna yield me dividends later, right? The food I eat now, I'm gonna cash in on that later to perform at a higher level than I did previously. Right? This is the difference. So when you think about it that way, you're like, well, before I decide on a food, before I decide on a meal, is this an investment or is this just, I'm just, I'm just being a consumer. This is what I mean. So now we get into mindset. So let's say now you take the investment approach, right? And you take the wellness approach. I'm going to love on myself. I'm going to, I'm going to eat out of self-respect. I'm going to draw lines. So when people are like, hey, you want to go out to eat? Oh, I will go out to eat twice a month. But I'm picking the place that we go and eat. I, I choose the place. This, you set guardrails, you set rules and red lines. I'm not eating in no greasy places. The only way I'm going out to eat is if I'm picking the place and we're only going out and I'm only going out to eat twice a month. I give myself two times a month, max two times. Now we're setting rules, we're being deliberate. And we're doing it out of self-respect because it is very disrespectful for people to just be constantly calling you out and just you just do oh we going here we going there this is where we eating and you just just dragging you along no because i'm not to, i'm not about to be running up behind nobody who don't care about what they eat or what goes in their mouth right because it's a respect thing that's like people who just walk, they just show up at your house whenever. They don't call you or nothing. They don't ask you if they come. People just show up at your house whenever. It's disrespectful, right? So it's important to have rules of engagement with everything. People, food, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when we're struggling to lose weight and we get to being obese is because we have poor relationships with people and we have poor relationships with food and we have poor relationships with ourselves. Poor relationships is the substrate for obesity. That's really what it is. It's not a laziness thing. It's a poor relationship thing, right? So, and the poor relationship a lot of the time started at home with your parents because your parents, they just, they just put whatever in front of you and your parents was obese and they ate, they ate crazy. And then you just, they just made you eat like them. And so then you end up being a kid who's just crazy overweight and they just keep feeding you. And then your family starts shaming you for being overweight and they start cutting your food portions. That's abusive. If you got three kids and one of them is big, so you cut the portions of the big kid and then get everybody else the normal portions, that's abusive. If you want to cut my food intake, we cut everybody's food intake. Treat, treat me fairly. 
everybody got left with the good gut health and you go and i got the bad gut health and you're gonna penalize me for it that's abusive right <clears throat> that's just an example it's not everybody's story i'm just talking about it i'm just talking about it being an example right so healthy relationships come with rules they come with red lines and guardrails right so we stick to the red line we stick to the red lines and the guardrails we eat with discipline and self-love and respect we go to bed at a decent time rinse and repeat and what happens is that within four weeks eight weeks 12 weeks we get good blood pressure results we bring our cholesterol down we bring our blood sugar down now we got some good blood sugar we're no longer insulin resistant we've, e we've even lost some weight now we can really start getting aggressive about ki about getting this weight off so now we set a new goal we want to drop 50 pounds we want to drop 70 pounds all right now we now now we can turn it up you're in the better state of mind to do it because if you're vitamin d deficient and magnesium deficient your well for motivation is going to be real shallow they're going to be like three feet deep all right you can be motivated for the first week and then after that first week, no more motivation. Because if you're going to do something, you're going to follow a 16 week process, a 12 week process. You're going to commit to a, to a process for a year straight. You're going to, your, your well for motivation has got to be deep because you got to keep drawing from that well every day and you will be tested. So weight loss. What's weight loss? Weight loss is basically you just peel the weight off. Pound after pound, five at a time, ten at a time. Peeling off the weight. I'm talking about like in a year you drop like 80 pounds. In a year you drop 50 pounds. In a year you drop 40 pounds. Or even less than that. It didn't really necessarily take 40 years to drop. I mean, it doesn't take a year to drop 40 pounds necessarily. It could, depends on the person. But if you're taking an aggressive approach or a fairly aggressive approach, you can you can burn some crazy weight, right? So you're committed let's say you let's say you're a woman you are five foot six 250 pounds you got to get to let's say a goal weight i want to get down to 160. a lot of y'all may be hearing that like damn 160 at five six i feel like i'm gonna look emaciated and this and then blah 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 right Keep in mind, the longer you've been overweight, you can't see yourself at a healthy weight. You can't. You, you, have, you, hit, you don't remember ever being there. You don't know what that feels like. You don't even know what that would look like. You at a healthy weight looks like a stranger. And that's a lot of change and it's terrifying. A lot of people have also say, hey, I want you to fire your job that you're currently working at. And once you're done, once you quit your job, call me i'm gonna set you up to get started on a brand new job tomorrow where you're gonna be making six times the income you're like what, six times the income well I'll, I'll quit my job i'm like yeah that's right but understand this job is going to challenge you and it's going to be very little margin for error so bring your a game Ooh. okay well let me think about it <laughs> terrifying the stakes are high right so this is what it's like getting to like an ideal healthy weight but here's the thing what i say five six two fifty so let's say you drop from 250 and you get to 190 right now if you got to 190 you were killing it you were on point you doubled down. You you were you were. What's the thing that we say these days? What's the new thing? Standing on business, right? You were standing on business, right? Both feet standing on business. Now there's a phenomenon called resistance. The more success you experience. Well, success creates resistance. The more successful you become, the more resistance you feel. So the more weight you lose, the harder it gets to lose more weight. 
right? So you celebrate. Let's say you go from 250 and you drop down to 230. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I feel an inch longer. And you, and you celebrate. You know what happens after the celebration? You start to pull back. You start to get a little relaxed. You start to get comfortable. Right? And then what happens? You gain like three, four pounds back next week. Right? And then the alarm goes off. Oh, no, I'm starting to backslide. Oh, no. Right? You might even you might even gain back five, six, seven pounds. You got a little too comfortable, you start slacking off. Resistance got you. That's what happened. It's a resistance. They got you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We've all experienced this. You get any kind of crazy progress, you hit resistance. Is that little gremlin in your ear? Ruin it. <laughs> Sabotage it. <laughs> Right? It's like this voice in your head telling you to pop your own tires. It's like that. It's a terrible thing. It's a little demon in your ear. Ruin it. Right? A little voice in your ear. Man, it's, it's been so long since you ate that. Oh, man. Just one. You worked so hard. Just, just one. It's not going to undo everything. Just one. You deserve it. Start rationalizing bad behavior in your mind, right? That's your lower self, right? We live with like three versions of ourselves at any given time. It's you, your inner child, and your lower self, right? Your inner child will be a little mad at you from like unresolved issues of being in abusive relationships with stuff right and then the lower version of yourself would be like the one sabotaging you that's the resistance and one of the best things you can do and you're gonna have to do this you're gonna have to develop a better relationship with your inner child and resolve those abuse issues because if you don't your lower self will form a coalition with your inner child and they'll double team you Instead of your lower self talking to you, your lower self would talk to your inner child. He's still ignoring you. Right? She's still ignoring you. She don't never want to talk about it, huh? Aren't you tired of being ignored? Right? You know what that is. When you up late at night, you stuck about think about random things, or you talk to a family member and they trigger you and they piss you off, or like a parent or something, and your parent said something. Or like you remember a thing and you bring it up to your parent and then they act like they don't know what you're talking about. You ever had that conversation? Or like, you know, let's say you've been big your whole entire life and you lose all this weight and you tell your parent or whatever. And you don't get like the response that you feel you should get from them. And then when you call them out on it or something or you press them on it a little bit, they get defensive and or they, or they gaslight you. Well, what do you want me to say? I mean, I'm happy for you. I, yeah, I mean, you know. And you get a little bothered by that and you stew about it late night in your head. And then the res and then the lowest self comes in. And then you start thinking about that croissant or you start thinking about that thing that you used to like to eat. And then we call this emotional eating, right? That's what we call this. <laughs> That's the process. That's what happens. That's the press. It's very subversive. It's very subtle. It's going on in the background. While you was getting all these gains and progress and losing weight, you're like, I'm getting snatched. I'm getting my best body, blah, blah, blah. Your lowest self was scheming against you and manipulating your inner child. And you know how like children are susceptible of being manipulated, right? By bad faith actors. This is what happens in your head. This is what happens, right? And we got to talk about this. We, we got to talk about this when it comes to that weight loss journey. Because we're not even at recomp yet. We're not at recomp. We're not at body recomposition yet. We're just talking about the weight loss. Now, let's say you put in the work and you pull your inner child in close. You resolve those issues. You have the real conversations with your parents or whoever, right? And you you tell them, I'm not going to tolerate that, right? Or you, you put your foot down on certain things. You have those hard conversations and you stick up for yourself. And you're like, look, I'm not going to let you gaslight me about that. We're done with that. I'm grown, right? Especially as black folks, you know, we're, you know that phrase, I'm grown, right? That's our thing, I'm grown. You, We're not about to do that, I'm grown. 
You can't just be talking to me any old kind of way. I'm grown. Right? So you so you put your foot down and you say, I'm grown. And then you proceed to now continue to reach your weight loss goal. Right? And and fellas, this isn't just for women, this is for men also. I went through this too, with the inner child thing and all that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, um the I'll tell you a little bit of a backstory about me because when I when I when I say to self and when I say to myself in my mind if I feel like eating a certain kind of way and I'm saying my mind also oh, you just gonna eat like an asshole today that's what we doing and I'm like nah that's not what we doing we're not doing that we have some restraint because in that tough love thing I picked a little bit of that up from my dad because my dad is the type of person where if I got a 98 on a test score, a 98 on a test, and I'm like, Dad, look, I got a 98 on the test. He's, he even say 98. What happened to the other two points? It's a 98. It's a 98. I think I got like one question wrong. He said, well, you know which one you got wrong? I said, well, goddamn. Can we just, I'm, can we focus on the fact I got a 90? I blew this thing out. Yeah, well, that's what you're supposed to do. But what question did you did, do? You know what question you got wrong? You just focus on the question you got wrong, right? So, <laughs> so now, even till this day, I shortchange my wins and my like. I'll get a win, and I'll be like, "That's what's up." Yeah, I did it, but I won't stew on it too long. It's never enough, right? So now I do that to myself, right? Well, my like, where are the other two points? <laughs> so it's like, oh, you had a forty-eight percent increase in whatever. I'm like, well, we're not fifty percent. What happened? What, what? So start post game and like what, what, what happened where, where did that other two where am i missing that other two percent so we're all susceptible to that it started as a child that's why it's so important you know you pull your inner child in close now the weight loss phase the the people who are most geared towards the weight loss phase the people who have a lot of weight to lose right if you got like at least 40 pounds to lose you definitely go for the weight loss phase. But let's say you're 40 pounds overweight and your goal is to lose 40 pounds. What you do is you take the wellness approach first and your weight loss comes as a side effect of making better food choices. That's what I should have did. I didn't do that. I just took 90% of my food and threw it out the window. I just threw it straight in the garbage. I was like, yeah, you know all that stuff you like to eat? All of it? Let's take all of it, throw it in the garbage. And I'm sitting here like, well, what am I supposed to eat? That's what I did. I was the trainer. Like, yeah, beautiful kitchen. All the stuff in here is garbage. All the your cabinets, fridge, all of that. They come bring a dumpster right in your house. We're just going to take everything and just all of it right in the garbage. You're like, damn, everything? Everything. All of it. Strip you of all the foods that, that you enjoy. Yeah, all that joy that you get out of eating. We're going to take all of that and put it straight in the garbage. <laughs> strip it down boom right it feels like an eviction right <laughs> like a repo or something you know it feels bad like damn i can't eat that either damn so it, a better thing would be let's focus <clears throat> focus on what to add in place we're not just going to focus on just throwing stuff in the garbage what we're going to do is focus on adding in the things focus on what you're adding in not what you're getting rid of so we're making a we're making a swap. I'm gonna give you this, and you can let go of that. Just put that down, and here. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And that's very important because when you're trying to lose weight, don't look at yourself and be like, "I hate what I see." Don't do that. That's one of the worst because that's abusive. I don't. I, I hate what I see when I look in the mirror. Don't do that. Because first of all, that's disrespectful. Because you know that you wouldn't appreciate it if somebody else looked at you and said i don't like how you look your body look gross i don't like it right you would be ready to throw hands what you mean what what can you imagine if somebody else said to you the stuff that you say about yourself in your head you'd be ready to fight she over here talking about she don't like the way i look she don't like the way my body look. Mind your damn business, right? You'd be upset. 
So, but that's the abusive relationship thing. Be careful what you tell yourself in your head. So be forward looking. Always focus on the future. Right? This is what I'm this is what I'm doing to get where I'm going. I don't need to keep telling myself about what I don't like about myself. What do you like about yourself? What are you looking forward to? Right? So we do all the mental and emotional work and a lot of this is like a mindset stream tonight. So let's say you're 40 pounds overweight. You swap out your food choices, you eat better, you start exercising. So then you drop 10, 15 pounds. So now you got like 30 or 25 pounds left to lose. Now you do your weight loss approach. Let's say you do your weight loss approach for 12 weeks. 12 weeks, we're going to burn straight through and you're going to drop 15, 20 pounds. Now you got 10 pounds left to lose or something like this. You're going to get real close to the ideal goal weight. Once you get real close, when you get like within 10 pounds or 15 pounds of your ideal goal weight now it's body recomposition time right now it's body recomposition time the big difference between weight loss and body recomposition is if you have a hundred pounds to lose and you're like i'm gonna just do body recomposition you're just gonna be building a whole bunch of muscle that you don't see you're just gonna be strong and fat right that's really what's gonna happen and the thing is you're gonna be like i'm strong i'm lifting heavier weight but i don't really see it so it feels like i'm not really making any progress that i can see and this can get in your head right because you're gaining more muscle you're more athletic but you still got all the weight on you you might have lost some body fat but you can't tell how much body fat you're losing you just feel stronger. But if your goal is, oh, I just want to have the waist sucked in and the abs showing and whatnot, because body recomposition implies my my body composition is different. My body fat is much lower. Body recomposition is like your weight on the scale doesn't move that much, but your body fat number, your body fat percentage changes significantly. Body recomposition is all about building muscle and shedding body fat. <clears throat> in the most optimal way possible right that's really what it's about it's not really a weight loss plan it's just straight up just dropping body fat we're not focused on losing weight we just want to put on muscle mass and drop body fat we want to do both of these things simultaneously in an optimal way right but this don't really work so much if you got like you know if you got to drop like 30 40 percent body fat Right, 15% body fat or so. It's not really going to work. So you want to get within striking range of your ideal weight, which is around like, you know, 10 pounds or so, 15 pounds. So now when you're that far away from your, from your ideal weight, you start putting on muscle and that's real visible. It changes the way that you look. The reason why this is important too is because when you keep changing your approach, the more you change it, the less progress you make because you have to go in a particular direction long enough to see the results, right? So I keep talking about things in eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. The reason why I talk about it that way is because if you just keep changing, oh, I wanna cut, oh, I wanna bulk. Oh, I wanna cut and bulk and cut and bulk and cut and bulk, right? Fellas, I know what I'm talking about. You start losing weight and you're like, I'm looking a little too skinny. I wanna put on muscle mass. And then you start focusing on putting on muscle mass. And then you're like, oh no, I'm gaining too much body fat. So then you start cutting again. And then you start cutting again and you lose weight and you're like, ah, I'm starting to look too skinny. So you start and you go back and forth, back and forth, in and out, in and out. And if you keep swinging from one side to the other, then you don't really make any progress in run one direction or the other. You just stay stagnant. Right? Um, and this is a trap that a lot of people fall into. So with body recomposition and here when with body recomposition it is extremely important to count everything it's extremely repetitive you got to be extremely militant about it and you got to be very calculated about it right weight loss like you could just straight up yo i'm gonna eat four days a week at a hundred percent of my calories and maintenance and i'm gonna fast for three days 
right? I've had people do that and they just drop like 10 pounds week one, 10 pounds week two, five pounds week three. They're like, yeah, you know, within a month I drop 30 pounds, right? <laughs> Something crazy like that, right? Um, I had somebody right now where we didn't even take a significant approach. We just did a fully raw plan and they're dropping a pound a day. In like 12 days, they dropped 12 pounds and dropped their blood, their fasted, they dropped their fasted blood sugar by like, what did they start at 160? I don't know if you hear, if you in here right now, if you want to correct the numbers. Um, and she, she 160 blood sugar down to like one, what, 120, 125 or something like that in 12 days. Crazy turnaround in the numbers. Fully raw diet. And every day she messaging me, I'm hungry. I'm tired. <laughs> right. And I want to touch on that a little bit because weight loss and like an aggressive approach is not easy because those hunger cues, hunger gets real because when you tell your body no, and your blood sugar start falling and your body got to tap into that stored fat, but your body like, yo, where the food at? right and your body every three four hours where the food at where's the food at where's the food at i'm tired where's the food at every day <laughs> and you'll go through that for like the first week two weeks because your body's like used to eating and having an abundance or whatever when you start getting really strict and you start like yeah, Judy, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I see the messages, right? You, you're absolutely killing it, but it comes at a price because your body is like, yo, give me sugar and fat. Give me a syrup. I want maple syrup. I want, I want 10 tablespoons of maple syrup. Right? I want... I want bread and cheese <laughs> and salt. Your body starts saying crazy stuff. And then your body mutiny against you. I'm tired. If you're not gonna feed me the if you're not gonna feed me that syrup, that bread and cheese and salt, I'ma go to sleep. <laughs> I'm a I'm a revolt. Right? Your body ready to go on strike. I quit. You don't wanna raise my pay. You don't wanna raise my pay. You don't want to increase my benefits. We're going on strike. That's what happens. Your body will mutiny against you. But eventually, your body will go, all right, fine. And you, you, that hunger will capitulate. And this is really what it is, right? It's who blinks first, right? Them cravings are you. Who's going to capitulate first? It's very important to remember what that is. Because all that hunger and stuff, you just have to get past that point. It's the most challenging part. You just got to get past it. And you got to wait it out. Right? Um, and it is like this internal economic battle. It, it's kind of, I'm gonna frame it this way because it's kind of funny. So economically, you have striking workers and then you have the company owner. And the company owner, they're getting crushed if the workers are not coming to work. It's real bad because they're gonna be losing wild money. So in order to keep them doors open, you're gonna have to bring in some scabs. Right? You're going to have to bring in poor, desperate workers who are willing to undercut and, and, and cross the picket line. Those are your better food choices. <laughs> your better food choices are the scabs, right? <laughs> Coming in. Um, and all them junk food cravings. They might hate the scabs, which is the better food choices. Like, what is this almonds? What's this avocado and spinach? What is this spring mix? What is this bitter ass greens? What is this? Where's the syrup? <laughs> right? Where's the bread and cheese and salt? Where's the cholesterol? I Let's clog these arteries up. Stop playing. Give me what I want. Right? I get it because I went through that. I, I understand. And I especially go through it when I start with the alternate day fasting. 
and you just don't eat for like 36 hours you and your body will be like so you mean to tell me you just gonna get in the bed and go to sleep and you didn't eat today word that's what we doing and this is kind of like the dialogue right i'm like going <laughs> your mind. who go to bed and don't eat you work your ass off and make and, and make this money and pay these damn bills and you're gonna sit up here and go to go to bed on an empty stomach like you homeless get your ass up and get some food right what you mean no <laughs> my body will wake me up like multiple times in the night what you do get up you know you're hungry <laughs> three o'clock in the morning get your ass up <laughs> That's how it is. It's real. It is difficult, right? I'm, I'm just telling you really what it is. It's not easy. Body recomposition. Now we get into body recomposition. All right, we're going to bring exercise in. Now, we, the, the number one fat burning exercise that is the most sustainable is long distance walking. You can walk your way straight to your ideal weight. No exaggeration. <clears throat> I mean, it'd be like, you know some 40 days and 40 night stuff you know there'll be some jesus of nazareth walking going on right where you <laughs> you're wearing a fitbit you know you accumulate hundreds of thousands of miles walked here on your weight loss journey right on some stuff like all right to, to get to my goal weight i'm just gonna walk to africa <laughs> just walk there I'm a forest gump my way to my finish to, to my ideal weight. Right? Walk, forest, walk. That's what it's gonna be. No running. Nothing crazy. It's gonna make your knees hurt. Just walk. Right? That's what I did. Nothing crazy. Just walk. I had my set resistance training. My exercises, build some muscle and walking. I wasn't doing all of this. We're going to do backflips and double dutch and headstands and we're going to go swim. No, 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 no. You're going to carry buckets of bricks and no, 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 no. Just walk. I'm just going to go on a nice walk through the woods. That's it. I'm going to walk around the suburbs and I'm going to look at all the nice houses that I can't afford, right? Man, look at these. I wonder how much these how much money these people make. That's why I, I would walk around like big suburban wealthy houses that I can't afford, and I would think about how the white people look who live in those houses. And if I saw somebody black, I would be like, yeah, right. Oh. That's right. We in there, right? <laughs> y'all know what I, I don't know. Have y'all experienced that before? Is that just me? Right. I'd be excited to see somebody black come out of like these these, these big old McMansions. You know, I would, I'm like, man, what would I have to do to afford one of these houses? Right? I'm gonna live in one of these houses. I, I would fantasize about how I want my house to look. You know, this would be the front yard, the backyard, and I would have this and that, 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 and all this type of stuff. Oh, that's nice with the bricks and blah, blah, blah. I wonder how much that costs. Right? And the walk was enjoyable because I would think about these things. I want a tree line and this and that. And just walk for hours. Um, and nothing crazy. Resistance training, I would do what, like five days a week, training for 45 minutes, and just walk a couple hours a day. Right, one hour one day, one hour another day. I would go on like two walks a day. That's what I would do. And that was like my body recomposition method. That was mine. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to kill yourself to do it. Now, in order to do now, be, body recomposition is interesting. And here's the here's why it's interesting. Body, in order to achieve body recomposition, you have to do two things. You have to be really solid and consistent on your diet. You don't eat any more than you have to, but you don't want to eat less than you have to. You want to get it just right. That's number one. 
So you gotta count everything. You count every gram. Let me tell you something. My fitness pal, I was I would be checking, I'll be all up in my fitness pal. You count everything, right? And I would track my miles walked and all of this kind of stuff. I would count everything. Every step, every mile, every yard, every gram, everything. Count everything. Count all the reps. Count the percentage increases of the weight on the bar when I was working out. Everything. Reps, everything. Count everything. Count the amount of uh, hours of sleep, minutes of sleep. Count everything. I was like an accountant. Right? Like an accountant. So if there was like 15 minutes missing anywhere, I'm like, oh, oh, what happened with them 15 minutes? We got to account for that. Well, I'm calling the police. We don't call the police no more. Not, we can't do that no more. Not here in the U.S. <laughs> for reasons I'm not going to get into. <clears throat> so now you're training and you exercise. You can't create a body recomposition without exercise can't do it without exercise not just because the, the the training is to build the muscle but also to train your mitochondria your mitochondria are the energy producing cells or the energy producing factories of your cells right so your exercise particularly your resistance training hard resistance training hard you give it your best shot you don't got to be killing yourself training doing resistance training for an hour for hours hour and a half or whatever 45 minutes is enough 30 minutes is enough hell 20 minutes is enough but you push hard you make every set count you take every set to the last stop every set you take every set to the last stop and this trains your mitochondria so your mitochondria you start to grow new mitochondria and they start to become longer right and you get less energy leakage and your body becomes more energy efficient which means that your body starts burning through excess glucose and fats your body will switch over to fats and burn fats for stored energy a lot quicker so now you don't feel tired right so that sluggish feeling i feel tired i want to take a nap man i'm hungry blah 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 you get rid of that feeling when you train your mitochondria right because your body can switch back and forth glucose fats glucose fats whatever's available right when you train your mitochondria so you become very energy efficient right and this improves training performance muscle growth as well as fat loss your body could tap into fat loss or into body fat sword fat at will and your body gets really good at doing that right to the point where you can have elite level athletes where they'll go on youtube and, and eat like glazed donuts and then show off a six pack abs and i'm like first of all if you're going to do that in front of people you better tell them why you're able to do that give, give them the whole story because most people can't do that you can do that because you're an elite level athlete where your mitochondria and your muscle mass is so well developed that you get away with doing that you got a gut and a gut microbiome made of steel elite level gut and chances are you probably never had to struggle with weight loss you've been lean your whole entire life you never destroyed your gut health right so the backstory is very important so you have a lot of people that be on the internet flexing they got eight and ten packs abs bulging all over the place they got veins popping out of everywhere forms everything look like google maps they look like cartoon characters Right, even got that square, that super square jawline and everything. You're like, man, I want to look like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the backstory? And what kind of gear are they on? Your goal, whether it be weight loss or body recomposition, and we all at some point in time, we have to go to the, through the body recomposition phase. But your goal should not be to train and eat a certain way to look like somebody else. It should be to look the best that your body is supposed to look. Whatever that looks like. You don't have no business trying to look like anybody else. You will look like the best version of you. It's very personal. You're not trying to look like nobody else. Don't do that. That's a trap. You can get in, you can get like motivation and inspiration from somebody else, but you're not trying to train to look like them. You, nobody look like anybody. Everybody's body's different. Everybody's life is different. 
you can have people where they'll look a they'll look a certain way and then you'll have another person to look another way and the difference can be one got more ass weapons as a child than the other one and that would you know that would change the way these two people look right so it's like oh well why is it so hard for me you got more ass weapons as a kid that's why right and you never had that relationship with your inner child to talk about that you just kind of just oh well everybody got beatings not like you <laughs> right don't don't sweep that under the rug because that can inhibit you from reaching the goals that you need to reach because you didn't acknowledge that and it could be something simple you know you go to your dad or something like you i didn't appreciate the way you swung on me like that as a child i want an apology right or you can ask for reparations <laughs> you see this fupa i got that's from you swinging on me like that as a child you file for your reparations <clears throat> All right, so let's answer some questions here before I get off, because I know I've been I've been going off on here tonight, cracking a lot of jokes and whatnot. But you know, we gotta keep it real a little bit, right? Oh, by the way, folks. Oh yeah, definitely hit the like button. What's going on here? Let's let's smash up the like button. If you like the stream, like the stream, because I've been dropping all kind of gems tonight. If you like the stream, hit the like button and like the stream drop kick the like button what is that stuff that people, what that youtubers say like share and subscribe hit the like button you know people's elbow the like button violently slam down on the like button excessively and aggressively slam on the like button I, people get really creative ways of saying like hit the, hit, hit the like. i gotta be better about that i just be coming on here just like all right i'm gonna tell y'all everything i know <laughs> what kind of questions y'all got for me did i miss anything here i'm not gonna be on here all night answering questions but i at least want to get in some oh uh, you said you ran under the bed again <laughs> <laughs> by the way did anybody with, with, did any of y'all like fight back like you grabbed the belt or something like that i you, you know what i i cut i cut my mom's belt with a pair of scissors i hated that damn thing i said we cutting this damn thing that's it you gonna have to get something else to hit me with i didn't get a whole lot of, i didn't really get weapons like that as a kid so it's a little bit easier for me to get lean because I would get because <laughs> I would get swung on like that. <laughs> Out here swinging. He said I'd be dead. Yeah, I was like, look, man, I don't. You could swing on me afterwards, but we cutting this damn thing. We're gonna we're gonna cut through all your damn belts. You want to you want to use your hands. He said your brother used to do that. We cut yeah, take the scissors. That's right. You're going to hate scissors when I'm done. <laughs> Stick and move. I had, um, I had, I had these two Puerto Rican friends when I was like elementary school. I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to name drop. But when I would, their mom would whoop their ass in front of me while, <laughs> while I was in the house. This is probably one of the ghetto things I've ever experienced in my life, right? But I appreciate it. I'm not knocking his mom, right? I'm not knocking their mom. I'm just saying it's just, you know, it's the culture. Right? And, <clears throat> and shout out to all my Caribbean folks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All of my Puerto Rican, Dominican, Haitian folks and whatnot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Where, you know, you make the jokes about the chanclas, right? Your mom throwing the slippers at you or it, they throw down and beat your ass anywhere at any time, right? So, and they were real used to getting beatings. And I knew they were really used to it because they would laugh and giggle when they mom swinging on them. Right. So she didn't beat it with the slipper and she would try to get them and she would try to get them in particular spots, but they wouldn't stay still. 
So they'd be squirming around and giggling and laughing and carrying on. And she would be trying to beat both of them at the same time. And they were like fat. So they were real heavy set. So they didn't really feel it as much. So they would be giggling. I guess she wasn't swinging that hard. Like they didn't, it didn't hurt or nothing like that. So they thought it was funny. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I should laugh. It was kind of funny, but I don't really want to laugh. Because she might hit me. And it sound like it shouldn't. I'm like, I don't know why they're laughing. Because that's loud. Like the, the, the crack of a slipper hitting a child, right? And I'm like, that crack is loud. And that's what it sounds like, a crack, crack, right? Like if you saw it in a comic book, it would be crack in big letters. It's loud. You can hear it from outside the apartment. Like if you were, if they had the windows open and you was downstairs outside the building, on the street level, you could hear it. You would hear them giggling in the loud crack. You wouldn't know it was an ass whooping, right? But they, yeah, they were getting toe up and they were giggling about it. And I remember that happening quite a few times as a kid. I cherish the moment, but I'm like, we laugh about that, but I'm like, I don't know if we should laugh about it. He said, that's when I learned the stick and move. Yeah. That's right, we, we, we're doing story time. To, we, we did some story time tonight. Okay, question. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I can say that word on here, but th that virus kind of messed me up and affected my joints. So what do you suggest for a workout? I've already started changing my diet. Oh yeah. Um, so what real, so what really works for your joints in particular is resistance bands training, doing resistance training with resistance bands. It's a great way, um, to allow your joints to heal and recover as you build muscle, muscle mass around the joints and improve your mobility. <clears throat> it's generally easier to train with resistance bands because your body doesn't resist them in the way they do conventional weights, right? Uh, so you're training with resistance bands, like getting a set of resistance bands and building muscle using that would be your best bet. Um, there are food choices you can make, like magnesium generally helps with joint pain, like magnesium malate in particular. Um, but you know, foods, foods rich in magnesium, um, also not skimping on your carbohydrates, getting, getting at least eight milligrams of zinc in your diet um <clears throat> that's beneficial getting an abundance of copper vitamin k is important in your diet as well uh, so yeah i think grapes cantaloupe watermelon spring mix baby spinach romaine lettuce watercress uh flax seeds hemp seeds these are some some foods definitely that you'd want to have in your diet um, and you know, I mean, you got to be patient with your body and gradually those issues will reverse over time. You just got to really be patient and consistent. I mean, it's really what it is. I mean, you know, the, those issues, you can outlast them, but yeah, the resistance band thing, that's a game changer as far as the joint pain stuff. I know. Cause that's my default. If I'm dealing with any type of injuries or joint issues, I would definitely pivot to resistance bands. <clears throat> Are you familiar with certain knee injuries or cartilage damage? Yes. Yes. You eat all that so you're on the right track? There you go. I'm 51 and trying to figure out the diet and strength training regime a regimen that works for me. I've lost a ton of weight. You lost a ton of weight. There we go. And I've hit a serious. What does that say? Oh, I've hit a serious wall. It was at my highest, 278, down to 197, 191. All right, so here we go. So now, now you're getting close. 
you're getting close right so crystal clark right what's your height you're trying to see something here oh by the way let me let me say this too because i do personalize coaching if you want to book a call with me there's a link in the description where you can book a call with me my schedule's filling up fast so if you want to get in there uh yeah because my, my schedule is getting tight so if, if y'all want to get on a call with me i wouldn't wait too long <laughs> uh and i also do personalized coaching so there's a link in the description for that as well of this video and i have a 12-week mentorship where uh, you get access to my high raw vegan diet guide uh recipes training plans um my self-development series i have a self-development video series it's called discover assess actualize the three steps to self-development that is a game changer all right i'm big on mindset and i actually have to start talking about it more um emotional wellness i talk about food a lot but i, I really got to talk about that kind of stuff more so i have a video series for that and then uh every week uh usually on thursday 8 p.m eastern uh, i do a live seminar with members where we get into the nitty gritty with things we do live meal planning we go over workout tutorials we do q a and the voice chat and all of that all right uh okay oh you're five feet tall oh okay yeah so you gotta stay the course so five feet tall i mean you want to get down to like one you got another 60 no yeah yeah you got like another 60 pounds left to go you almost there you close you real close to getting into your body recomposition phase you real close don't give in to resistance because you will you're getting pushback you're getting resistance now now there will be a phase where you will have to pivot so you're gonna have to calculate your diet plan your 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 macros and whatnot according to your ideal goal weight and you need to know what your ideal goal weight is so if you're trying to get to 120 you want to start calculating things according to uh your goal weight of, of 120 pounds right um now if you are if you are experiencing resistance you're hitting a wall that happens periodically when you reach a certain amount of weight you got to stay on it but you would have to modify your approach so for example you can increase training uh frequency where you add a training day um you can add um, a half a mile or one mile of walking to every day um you know there's things where you can slightly you can add that five or ten percent right uh 120 is a good way for somebody 120 125 is a good way for somebody uh who is five feet tall uh but it's a, it, it's a good thing to shoot for now if you if you hit 130 and you're like i like how i look here i like how i feel here i want to stay here then do that and so when you hit that 130 then you go into body recomposition so you can do that as well right but what i'm saying is you set a goal that like exceeds expectations so you go a little bit further so that if you need to shop stop short you can stop short right so that's one of those things where you can feel it out the, uh, this is where i'm going wrong i keep switching things up and this caused my issue yeah, that's what I'm saying. You want to build on the strategy you're already deploying. Right? But whatever changes you make, you have to do them long enough to know if they're working. So if you make a change, doing it for a week or so is not really going to tell you whether it's working or not. If you make a change, write it out for four weeks at least. Uh, what do you recommend to drop stomach fat? I'm six foot one, 175 pounds. Six one, 175. What's your body fat percentage? Uh, I don't have a lot. I can flex and see my abs. Okay. But I want them constant to constantly be there. You mean you only see your abs when you flex? Um, if you only see your abs when you flex, you're probably, you're probably at in between 12 and 14% body fat. You're not really overweight though because 175 is actually pretty lean for somebody who's six feet tall so you're in the body recomposition phase so i would say this is where you really focus on um like a 
either you can so you can do this you can do like a strength and conditioning where let's say you do you train four days a week and you do metabolic conditioning twice a week that could be a good split so like let's say you do um let's say one training day is a deadlift day another training day is a squat day another day is an overhead pressing day and another day is a bench pressing day right on your deadlifting day that's basically like a back day where you're doing like pull-ups rows deadlifts hamstring curls basically all the posterior muscles on your squatting day that's when you're hitting uh your back squats your walking lunges leg presses leg extensions that kind of thing your overhead pressing day is basically you know your strict pressing uh your farmers carries um you know shrugs lateral raises things like that basically it's a shoulder it's like a shoulder and grip day uh, and then if you have a bench day that's like your chest day right so you're just hitting all of your your push-ups your bench press incline presses dips that kind of thing so you can have training you have a training split like that and then you have your metabolic conditioning days where you take out like um anywhere from 10 i want to say 10 minutes of metabolic conditioning right running an assault bike uh jump roping or doing some type of interval training there's a lot of things you could do for metabolic conditioning one of my favorite metabolic conditioning exercises or things that I like to do is rowing on a row machine, on an ergonomic row machine. Big fan of that. Um, so let's say you do, um, you row 250 meters and you row 250 meters four times, but you try to beat your time. So how quickly can you finish the 250 meters each time? And so you can beat your time each week. Uh, so, you know, things like that. Um, and you know, your box jumps, you could do overhead presses, farmers carries, things like that, um, on those days, but those workouts are short, right? We're looking like at like a solid eight to 10 minutes and like another 10 minutes for like mobility and movement hygiene stuff. Right. And that can get you, that can get you leaned out there. Uh, or you can do like I did and you can do four or five days. You could do five days a week. Um, where let's say you do two, I, what I do, I did two lower body training days and three upper body training days. And I walked like, I walked like 10 miles a day. <laughs> I was walking them miles. Um, and that's a way to get lean up also. And as long as you have your diet dialed in, you'd be able to get there. Okay, so I was walking like eight to ten miles a day. I'm in the I'm in the north. So the winter uh, put a stop. Oh, walking during the winter is actually a game changer. I got lean doing that walking in the winter outside because it's cold outside. So basically, you have to walk faster to get warm. <laughs> so you layer up and get out there because that's cold therapy. Um, you know, there, there's a metabolic advantage to embracing that cold. Uh, what do you suggest to eat to heal or avoid back spasms? Potassium. Uh, potassium, water-rich foods, vitamin C-rich foods, and magnesium. Make sure you're getting enough magnesium in your diet. Black seed oil. Black seed oil is, can actually be very beneficial for joint health. So if you're having joint pain or something like that, it would be a good idea to take black seed oil. Um, in the morning with vitamin D. You do vitamin D and uh, a teaspoon of black seed oil uh, together. CJ King, appreciate you. Great information. I appreciate you for real. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in. Keto was great at first, but again, hit a wall. Well, yeah, you can't really ride the keto thing straight to the finish line. It's not really how it works. It's not free. You, you make yourself more insulin resi resistant the longer you do it. So you add carbs back to your diet. You start gaining back all kind of weight. Um, so you gotta have a you have you gotta have a plan B when you follow a certain strategy. And I talked about this last stream last week. You can deploy a certain strategy and you run that strategy and try to get as much out of it as you can, but have another strategy to pivot to afterwards. Right, because one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they go from one strategy and then they get off the strategy, but they don't have another one set in place to pick up where they left off. 
When converting from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet, are there methods to eliminate the withdrawals? The withdrawals that might come with the headaches and stuff. Generally speaking, um, if you have, if you adopt a whole food plant-based diet and it's rich in that zinc and that magnesium and that folate and whatnot, um, the cravings won't really be so extreme. And but you want to eat in abundance. That's the thing. You don't want to like change from eating all animal products. You cut all out all animal products and you end up under eating because that's a nightmare to do that. So you eat in abundance. You just change your food choices. Um, but you will, well, I don't know if you will, but you could experience hunger and that's fine. You just don't capitulate, right? When you're trying to drop weight or, uh, go through body recomposition. I'm currently a 40 year old male, five, uh, five, six, two, 283. I want to embark on a realistic fitness and nutrition routine that I can sustain even with my hectic schedule as a school administrator. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So you're talking about time efficiency, which is right up my alley, right? So we're looking at like a raw diet or a high raw diet with like 20 to 30 minute training sessions. Um, so yeah, definitely sustainability that because you know, time efficiency is my thing. If your, if your plan is time efficient, it's a lot easier to stick to good tasting foods that satiate all your cravings and it's and it's time efficient which means you don't have to do these really long workouts and all of this type of stuff um as far as sustainability you have to ask yourself what are you sustaining because the more progress you make you will have to pivot to a different strategy over time Uh, what are your recommendations for intestinal infection? Generally speaking, my first impulse is water fasting. Now, infection implies like bad bacteria or some type of fungal infection or something. So, you know, having herbal teas with things that are antibacterial or antiviral. So like oil of, excuse me, oral oil of oregano, black seed oil, ginger tea, turmeric uh peppermint things like that as far as the teas along with the fast should really help with that so you're looking at like a like a seven day fast or at least three days Se second option is a raw vegan diet um with a tight eating window um and you're buffering your fruits with leafy greens so spinach watercress kale spring mix things like that so pairing those with your fruits cashew cheese seems delicious is it acceptable eh, it depends on your goal it depends when you say is it acceptable and well acceptable for who right because for some people it would be and some people for not it also depends on how much you're using so that's a bit more of a complex uh thing if it fits well into your plan and it suits your goals, then yeah, it's not inherently a bad thing. I mean, cashew cheese is not inherently a bad thing, especially when it's homemade, right? So generally speaking, yeah, it's acceptable, but it, it depends on the goal. Do you also not recommend fruit early morning? I heard you say intermittent fasting, eating 12 to 6, 12 a.m to 6 p.m. 12 a.m. to 6 p.m.? I don't think I said 12 a.m. to 6 p.m. You mean 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Right? Um, no, for, it, could, it depends on your goal. I mean, you can, I don't have a, I mean, a lot of the times fruit is a good thing to start your day off, with, generally speaking. How much vitamin D daily? Generally speaking, 5,000 I use. Book a call with coach. True. Tell him, Juju. How do we book a call again? Oh, yeah. So there's a link in the description of this video. 
uh and it says you know book a call or a consultation request that was one of those keep sharing because you're great i appreciate that yeah i ain't going nowhere i'm in it all right all right yo folks you know what i'm saying i gotta I, I, speaking of bedtime and that's another thing I, I gotta do a sleep quality stream my folks have been killing it when it comes to improving quality sleep all right i may have to do a whole stream on sleep quality because one of the things that people come to me the most with is having poor sleep quality and i've had a lot of success with people improving their sleep i mean sleeping hard um but there's one person right now in particular that i'm working with trying to figure out their sleep quality and we're gonna get it right we're gonna figure it out that's that that's the other two points it's like the one person we haven't quite figured it out yet so we're still working on it so that's the other two points my dad haunts me it's keeping me from that that hundred percent i don't i don't like the 98 98 is 98 percent is good but it's not good enough we want, we want the other two points I, I wouldn't do that to my kid though. What's the other two points? I wouldn't do that to my kid. I'd do it to myself, but I wouldn't do it to my kid. I also wouldn't if my kid is eating something. I'd be like, oh, so you're just gonna eat like an asshole today. I wouldn't do that with my kid. Keep it in. I gotta have a men's mental and emotional health stream. We gotta talk about that too. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> cause fellas, we take a, we normalize abuse in very pathological ways that are it kind of funny, but it's, you shouldn't laugh at it. It's funny, but don't laugh. So we, we got to talk about that. And that's, that would be important for, for the ladies to listen to also. Because if you're married, you have a husband, just know he's probably went through and going through this. He's, he's keeping in a lot of stuff that he doesn't tell you. He's sucking up a lot of stuff. You have no idea what he's going through in his head. He's just pushing it down. We appreciate your time. I appreciate that. Big shout out to you, Tribe Melody. Yeah. What is the average number of hours that's good for you for sleep? I think anywhere between six and eight. Ideally, you can get as close to eight as you can. Um, ten is probably a bit too much. So I think like eight, nine, probably nine is like the max I would go. But eight generally is enough. I use a Fitbit, um, and it gives me a sleep score. And I'm all about that sleep score. Oh, I mean, I check that sleep score every morning. I check, I check the stats. I don't know if it's 100% accurate, but close enough. I track it. I need to count everything. I'll be trying to get them, trying to get that sleep score number. I gamify everything in my life. That's another thing I got to talk about. I got to make a list of streams I'm going to do. One of them is going to be how to gamify your life to, to hit peak success. Right, get the other two points. How to gamify your life. Get them other two points. Exactly. uh what would you recommend for knee cartilage injury as far as physical therapy or food choices all right um i don't know if there is a particular food that would that would rebuild cartilage it's not one it's a holistic thing it's your whole entire diet that does it so your diet has to be really good at reducing oxidative stress. That's number one. Your diet has to be hydrating. So having water-rich foods, having foods that are rich in magnesium, having foods that are rich in zinc, um, having foods that are rich in malic acid. So for example, apples, um, mango, watermelon, cantaloupe, right? These are some foods, uh, hemp seeds, foods that are rich in zinc, uh, protein, full amino acid profile. So it's a it's a pretty lengthy list but it has to hit all the it has to check off all the boxes it's not just like one mineral or one vitamin and it's like oh it's just this thing that's going to rebuild your cartilage because there's a lot of moving parts and it all starts with hydrating your body alkalizing your body and reducing inflammation as much as possible <clears throat> oh yeah copper that's another thing that's really important for that Uh, also fasting because you can go through a fasting strategy where you can leverage autophagy uh, to rebuild joint 
uh, issues as well. So like the alternate day fasting, that improved on some things, some joint things for me as well. Um, because I aggravated my hamstring big time. So, and I think it's from sitting in this chair too much. Um, sitting on, on my soft meat in, in my booty. On my left side. I got scoliosis. Don't make fun of me. That's right? not, I'm serious. It's not a joke. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm like hyper conscious about it because like I'll kind of lean like and it looks like I'm leaning. I look at it in my videos and I look slanted in all of my videos. It drives me nuts. Um, but that's because the camera's off to one side. It's not directly in front of me. So, but I see it and I feel like I look excessively slanted and am conscious about it because I know I have scoliosis. Um, and so things like this could throw off certain things. And so I got like, I got some inflammation issues going on in my hamstring. I'm like the leaning tower of Pisa. All right, y'all look at all the questions flowing in folks hit the like button. All right. All these questions. You gotta hit the like button and then ask a question. All right. Any suggestions for dry skin and extremely dry, flaky scalp? Oh, water rich foods and increase the amount of zinc in your diet. So, also vitamin E. So, foods that would be really beneficial would be hemp seeds, uh, kiwis, avocado, Brazil nuts, and sunflower seed kernels. Those are a few definitely that would be really important for that. Uh, also cantaloupe or sweet potato or uh, butternut squash. Those are some others also. Oh, this, what is this? Any suggestion for Oh, yeah, I answered that. Okay. Thank you for your time and patience. And I plan to book a call with you soon for sure. Appreciate you for tuning in. Stay strong, brothers, and learn to, to say no and mean it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's true. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, I would make this joke. And it's like, I used to do stand-up comedy back when I was younger. And one of the jokes that I would tell is you had to practice saying no. Like, for real. So you get in the mirror and you say it in different kind of ways. No. No. You know, you see which one feels the best for you when you say it. No. Mm -mm. No. Um, and it's... I'm not going to get too much into it. But the, so the, the, the main thing is, and we do this. The people who have the hardest time saying no, we do all explaining. Right? If somebody asks you something and you're like, well, you know, I wish I could, but... Or, well, you see, what ha happened was I got to do this and I got to do that. We'll see if I have enough time above and all his words. It's hard to just no. It's just hard to say no, right? Because you feel like an asshole. You, no. Right? It's somebody who you're cool with. You feel like that will ruin the relationship if you say it like that. Hey, um, you know, can you uh, can you um, come and, and, and pick me up from the airport uh, tomorrow? Um, and then bring me to this meeting that I have in the city and then I got and you know you'll be like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do all of that I, I gotta see how my schedule that's like the, that's like a real soft way of saying no we don't want to just be like no no <laughs> right no and and the joke is, it feels good though to say no, especially when you say no and they don't blow up on you for it. Then you're like, oh, okay, it's not so bad to say no. And then you feel more comfortable saying no. And then you start saying it whenever it just, you, you say no, even just, even if you want to say yes, you just say no, just see how they react. And it's like, nah, I'm just playing. I'll, I'll do it. But it feels good to just say no. And you throw and you say no, and then you you face you, you say no with your with your mouth and you say it with your face. So it's no, and then this face, and then the head shake. No, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. with the head nod and the scrunching of the face. That's a solid hard no. It's borderline offensive, and that one may be one of those things that you want to practice if you have a hard time saying no. Say no in less words. Right. 
Uh, let's see. Saying no is healthy. Yeah, exactly. No. Because if you, it, it, and especially too, when people find out that you say yes a lot, they start asking you all kind of stuff. They just start asking you for stuff. You got a dollar? Can I put my hand in your pocket? You just start saying, you know what I mean? You open your mouth. Let me see the inside of your mouth. They just, because they just think you're just going to do whatever you ask them to do, right? And when people start, hey, let me see your tonsils. You have tonsils. Let me see. Open your mouth. You just, no. 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 And when you do that, and people know you as a person who just says no with no follow up explanation, don't start explaining after you say no. Just no. And that's it. Right? So they know. Well, if I'm going to ask them for something, it better be big. Don't ask them for nothing silly because they're just going to say no. Right? And it frees you. You actually can get more time in your day by just telling at least one person a day, no. This is especially important at work, right? So that's probably another thing. I'm not going to get too into it too, but you know, especially in your corporate job, because you know, in that corporate office, you be doing all kinds of stuff you don't want to do, stuff you don't even have to do just because, and you be doing stuff because you don't know how to say no. Be late at work, missing meal prep, skipping meals, doing all types of stuff, doing other people work because you don't know how to say no. So, no. Head nod, face scrunch, and then follow it up with, mm, -mm. No. All right, y'all. It sounds like my husband. Yeah. <laughs> Solid no is good. All right, y'all. Let me get out of here because I, I, I said I was going to go to bed at a decent time. I'm, I got I to gotta say no. I got to end the stream. So, good night. I'll be on back on here next Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And for those of you who are tribe members, I'll be back on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern in the member discord. Have a good night, y'all.